Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Martin Bell, I'm a data scientist with more than 10 years of experience. In this channel, I teach about data science and I do coding tutorials. In today's video, I'll be doing a tutorial on Plotly Express and how we can use it for exploratory data analysis. I'll be showing the tips and tricks that I know that I think are very useful for data visualization. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. So here I'll be showing the top five data visualization tips and and tricks I know about Plotly Express. So here I'm just importing some libraries, loading some data from the Seaborn library. I'll be using the Diamond dataset first and also the Taxis dataset. So this is just Taxi Drives information. Okay, so the first type of plot that I think is very useful is the box plot because it helps you um, understand the relationship between a numeric and categorical variable. Here, I'm just plotting the, the box plot. So it's px.box, passing the data frame, diamonds. So the categorical variable is color. The numeric variable is price. And I also have to pass this argument. So it colors it by color. <laughs> uh, it'll make sense in a second. So, OK, so basically, this is the box plot. So um, there's, I mean, you can remove these uh, some values here. I think it's really great. It's also interactive. You can look at the values. The only thing that's missing, in my opinion, in this plot is um, the yeah that you don't control the sorting of these values. But if you want to do that, that you probably want to do it. This is the way to do it. So here I'm. I created the function that basically lets you sort and the values of a numeric variable using the median, or you can change the function here if you want. Um, let me show you what this changes. So, so now I this part is the same thing. I just added this argument, category orders, and I pass in this, this dict that I created. So this just tells the, the plot that, okay, this is the order I want the boxes to be in. Now it's even easier to read because it starts from the larger one and goes to the smaller one. Next plot, um, that's relatively a similar idea. So the idea is to use small multiples with histograms. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so basically here we have a histogram for each color value. And the way I, I do this is just pass the X as price. That's the numeric variable. And I pass color as the facet call because it's the one, the variable I, I want to, to get this distribution. Um, so you can think of it as some sort of uh, conditional probability. So the, you want to understand the, the distribution of price conditioned by color. So that, that would be a more statistical way of thinking of this type of data visualization. And you can also control the, the order of the categories in the same way. And please add a title to the plot so, <laughs> so we can understand what we're talking about. Um, OK, and there's one more thing that you might want to do that. I mean, here, the scale of the plot, you see that, I mean, it's the same scale for all the histograms. But I think it's better if each histogram has its own scale. So. This is what I'm doing here. Uh, you just need to add this line, really, and it does this for you, so it's not a big deal. Um, I, I don't know. I, I personally generally do this because I can compare the, the shape, the distribution. It's a lot easier. OK, so let's continue. So now scatter plots and linear relationships. So in this case, I'll be working with the taxis data set. So the first step is, OK, let, how can we do a, a scatter plot? And this is just a scatter plot of uh, the variable distance in the x-axis. And this is the total, the total fare. Um, basically, the way to think of the scatter plots in a more statistical sense is that you put in the x-axis the independent variables, the predictors, and in the y-axis the, the target variable. So here I'm saying, OK, um, I think there's a linear relationship between the distance and how much the ride costs. There are some values here that I don't know what happened. Maybe 
Maybe there's an explanation for that, uh, but that would be interesting to take a look at. Maybe there are uh, errors in the data, but this is generally the way you think of a scatter plot as a linear model. It's a uh, yeah, very simple way, but also very useful. So what else can we do? I'm just going to create this net fair variable because I, I'm not sure the total variable is exactly the, the fair. So it doesn't, it doesn't change a lot the results, but I uh, just wanted to make sure that we're doing the things correctly. So basically I'm taking the fair, adding the tips and removing the tall. Okay. So the next, um, plot is you guessed it, small multiples and scatter plots. So here I'm using the X variable, the same one, the, in the Y variable, I'm using net fair. And here I'm kind of conditioning or, uh, using this facet call that coming back to this conditional probability idea. The idea of the plot is I want you to understand, uh, the net fair and how the distance and this, uh, variable explain it. What I can also do here is include a linear model for each plot. Okay. And we get this plot and I think it's a, a little bit interesting plot. It's not really amazing, but I think it's interesting, a little bit more interesting than the scatter plot, the, the one we had originally. And here we can see that there's a linear relationship, but maybe the relationship is not exactly the same for each uh, of these Bureau. Um, so these are some kind of districts in New York. So, and if you, if you hover over the data, I mean, you, you can even see the, the coefficients. So, and I mean, this is really great. I mean, it's really amazing what they've done. You can see the, the model that you would have gotten if you would fit it on this data. This is some, a plot that I think is very, very useful for exploratory data analysis, but because it also has a statistical, uh, interpretation. And if you want it, you can also run these models yourself. Um, you don't need the linear model. You can just run the model if that's all you need. Um, and I generally find myself go doing, going back and forth between a plot and fitting the model. And what I've done here is, um, I'm using this formula interface of stats models and I'm using, uh, yeah, I'm saying what exactly the same thing that I have in the plot, more or less, um, net fair explains by the interaction of distance and the bureau. So, and I have these coefficients here that give me an idea of this, uh, relationship. And I mean, I find this very useful looking at the data and then seeing if these variables, if they're significant. So here we can see the P value and we also see the R squared. So the R squared is quite high. Um, so in this case, it seems like a reasonable model. So, okay. What else can we do? So another option that I want to just throw it to you, I think it's, it's useful. It doesn't apply to all cases, but I think it's useful to know that it exists. So you can pass in a, a a variable for grouping in the columns and another one for grouping in the rows. Um, is this the same plot as the one we, we just did? The difference is that you can have a variable on the columns and a variable on the rows here. So it's, it's here. So this is the taxi color. So this is yellow and this is green. Well, actually, if you hover over some point, you can see what kind of data you are in. And you can also include this trend line here. Um, and it, it's, that's the same thing. Of course you can fit the model also. And in this case, I just added it as another variable and I mean, it, it's significant. So it seems it helps explain the fair. Okay. So one more type of plot that I think it's, it's useful is the, the line plot. So I'm going to uh, do an aggregation to have some, some data to make a line plot. And I'll show you how you can do small multiples with line charts. So here I'm just, uh, getting the date of the ride. So, um, we can see here, just getting the date of this timestamp value. And, and here I'm doing a, an aggregation. So I'm grabbing these taxes, data frame, grouping by date and pick up raw and computing the, the size. That means the number of observations for each of the, these grouping variables. 
And then I'm calling the, the, the variable, the index variable that we, we get a count and renaming the column. So let me show you what we get here. So without the reset index, we get this kind of multi-index structure. So if I call reset index and named it this column count, we, we get something I think it's easier to do plots with. In order to make these plots a little bit nicer, I just remove the pickup from this, the column, and this is what we get. Okay, another way to do this would be using value counts. So you just filter the columns, pass value counts, and the same thing happens. I mean, it's, a, it's kind of unclear to me which one is better. I think this one is very reasonable. You first group by the variables, and then you compute the size. But value counts is also very, I mean, yeah, it's very useful, very clear also. So both are, I think, are fine. Okay, so this is a line plot with of these count rights. So we have the, the x variable date and the y variable uh, count. And we're passing this to raw as the color. So here we get a very typical line chart where we have multiple variables in, um, yeah, in one chart. And this is fine. I mean, this is very common, but if you have, I don't know, 10 lines, it starts to get very difficult to, to understand what's happening. So another way to, to do this part is using small multiples. So you just pass face it row because you want a, a, a plot for each row and and the, the rest is the same thing. So x-axis date, y-axis count, color raw, faces raw, raw, and and that's it. Um, I think this is this could be interesting in some cases where you just want to, you don't care exactly about the number, but you care about the, the shape of the lines. It's a simple plot to make. I know. I thought. I think it's uh, it's not very very commonly done but I think it's also useful. So yeah, I think that's it for today. Those are all the lovely tips and tricks that I have to show. I hope you enjoy the video.